Good morning. How are you? It is uh, beautiful in Virginia today. Sun is out. It's warm. And uh, <clears throat> there are, of course, a couple of political stories that uh, do not flatter the Republican Party or he whose name we'd rather not speak about. Uh, the first one is uh, in Wisconsin. We know Cheney was going to have a challenger, and she does. It's a state senator, Bouchard. And it's an interesting case because we're finding out today that when he was 18, he raped a 14-year-old. And uh, <clears throat> apparently he worked out a deal so that if he married her, he wouldn't be prosecuted. And so he married her when she was 15 and he was 19. And then after that, they got divorced. And when they got divorced, he kept the child. And when the girl was 20, she committed suicide. He arrogantly and in total bad taste uh, compared their relationship to Romeo and Juliet. Uh, some may remember that in that story, both Romeo and Juliet ended up deceased. In this case, only this poor girl. I, I just uh, can't imagine what kind of mind thinks after that disclosure, you can run for office. But he says it's not going to change anything. We'll see about that. And we'll also learn something if he is in the primary, uh, what kind of Republicans there are in Wisconsin that would have this fellow replace Cheney as their representative. And I suppose Cheney will also run as an independent, so she'll be running in the general election. <clears throat> but this kind of makes gets, I don't know, I, they're all of a, all of a color, uh, corrupt, arrogant, uh, disrespectful of individual rights. And then instead of expressing remorse at what he did, he's like romanticizing it as if it was Romeo and Juliet, ignoring what that play was really about. And, uh, well, there it is. Now, this is not the only political error that's underway. In Georgia, we have in... Uh, Fulton County. This county is uh, got the highest percentage of persons of color, and it is the county that Trump believes cost him the election in uh, Georgia. That may be true. And the narrow win of Biden was the subject of a conversation between uh, then President Trump and the Secretary of State, asking him basically to give him the votes that were the difference between him and Biden, in which Biden won, and add one more vote. So he wanted the most arrogant show of changing the election by pure power. Secretary of State, to his credit, said, I'm not doing that. We've done the count. It is what it is. Okay, so where do we go from there? Two places. One is the newly elected DA for Fulton County has been investigating Trump for leaning on and trying to affect the election. The uh, other thing is that a judge in Fulton County <clears throat> has allowed citizens to look at the ballots and to do a recount. Now, remember, there were three recounts and one hand recount, all of which confirm the election at each step. So why would they do that? I think to create the atmosphere that would undermine the possible indictment by the Fulton County DA against Trump. Now, I think this is a lesson in what happens when you don't act on what you have soon enough, you prompt these kinds of desperate defenses. So I don't know where that's going to go. But if I were ready to indict, I would do it tomorrow. But that's me. You'll notice that we have people who aren't ready to you know, pull the trigger, so to speak. And that includes the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York, my old office. My friends and associates from that office have scratched their head, wondering why nothing has happened there. Finally, <clears throat> and this is off uh, the subject, I guess, but uh, we are getting better numbers in terms of infections and deaths. They're, they seem to be slowing down, and that's great. And this is happening without those deplorables who still don't wear masks and aren't going to get vaccinated. 
And we're going to deal with those people more slowly by the fact that they will get the virus and develop antibodies or die. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not, I don't, I don't cel celebrate death in any case, and I don't celebrate it here. But it is your just reward for being selfish and not thinking of other people, including your own family. So, but as compared to India, we are so much better off, even with our deplorables, because they have a terrible situation. And I, I was in a place, Varanasi, years ago in India, very religious, because the Ganges River comes south and then it turns north. And they read great significance into that. And it's believed if you touch those waters, it will give you uh, extended life. And I did touch the waters. I originally thought I'd swim in it, but I didn't because to the left of this uh, religious ceremony I attended in the waters, I was in a boat, they were putting cremated bodies into the river, which is what they do. And to the right of this celebration, there were women cleaning their clothes in the waters of this same river, the Ganges. And now the, the pandemic is so devastating in India. So many people are dying that <laughs> they're just uh, allowing <coughs> bodies to go into the water without being cremated. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I caught another bug. So we're sending 20 million doses, but that'll protect those people who haven't already been infected. And I guess what they really need is how do they deal medically with the logistics of all those people who are suffering? So I, you know, I'm sorry this is not a, I don't know, a happy talk. I do think that there are lessons to be learned from what the Republicans are so arrogantly doing. And there is something we have to do about India, even as we have to do things here at home to limit those unnecessary deaths by those deplorables who don't care about their neighbors or even their own family. So uh, on that note, uh, I wish you well. And I'm out here uh, enjoying my, uh, my trees. They really are life-giving themselves and very encouraging. And so, except for those insects. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.